an infinitely long solid cylindrical insulator insulator okay has radius of 14 centimeters r1 and charge volume density of rho electric field of the curved surface of the cylinder is measured to have magnitude of this the solid sphere of the radius this has a charge density of rho since it has a density of um, rho it means that it's also an insulator because if it was a conductor all the charge would be at the outside which means it would have a a sigma a surface charge density as opposed to a volumetric charge density all right determine the electric field e2 at the sphere surface in terms of e1 r1 r2 for the check investigate um e2 if sphere go becomes extremely small okay so first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a picture of our cylinder so is that what we're talking about first and i'm going to look at a small delta l so the formula that i know for the electric field to to a line of charge is 2k lambda over z so i'm going to rewrite that as e1 because we know that the electric field due to the cylinder is e1 is 2k lambda over z the thing is we're not given a lambda we're given a rho a we're not we don't have a linear charge density we have a volumetric so i'm going to look at this little section right here this little delta l and i'm going to turn this delta l into a volumetric so the definition of um, lambda, linear charge density, is a little bit of charge for a little bit of length. Yep, some means well. Definition of rho is a little bit of charge for a little bit of volume. So the volume of this cylinder here is going to be the area times the length. So I can rewrite this as delta Q over area times delta L. So a little bit of area times delta L is going to give us volume. And since this is a circle, it's going to be 2 pi, no, pi r squared. Pi r, I'm going to, and it's going to be r1, I believe. Yep. This is r1. 2 pi r1 squared times delta L. Rearranging this I can say that um is this what I want maybe two pi r delta q yeah we're gonna go for this so I'm gonna say that rho times pi r1 squared equals delta Q over delta L. And we know that that is equal to lambda. So we just found a relationship between um, a volumetric charge density and a linear charge density for a cylinder. So we can come up here and we rewrite this as 2, 2 K over Z times lambda, which we know is the same as rho pi R1 squared Rewriting this once just for convenience, not really because we are going to add any substantial value. 2 pi r1 squared times k times rho over z. And z in this case, we're told is we are measuring it from the surface, and the surface is going to be the same as r1. So Z is going to be R1, so that means we cancel some of the R1s. I know I always said I was going to re re rewrite it once. I'm going to rewrite it again. So we have 2 pi R K rho, and this is R1. Okay, so that is the electric field at the surface R1 uh, for E1. So now let's do something similar, but look at the sphere. So now we have a solid sphere, radius R2. Oh, R2. 
and we want to determine the electric field E2 at the surface of the sphere in terms of E1, R1, R2. So I'm just going to write the only formula I can think of, which is going to be E equals KQ over R squared. Now, this R squared is going to be R2, and we want to use, um, I think, rho? Yes, because we're told that the sphere is made of the same charge density as the cylinder. So we want to use, we want to try to incorporate rho in there to find a relationship. So I'm going to say that rho, which is defined as a little bit of Q over a little bit of volume, and this is going to be the same as Q over volume for a um, uniform um, vo uh, rho, volumetric charge density. So all the Q, all the, uh, if we look at the section of all the charge and all the volume, we just do the charge divided by the volume. If it's uniform, and that's going to give us our rho, volumetric charge density. So we can rearrange this as Q equals rho times volume. Well, this volume is just going to be the volume of the sphere. So it's going to be rho times 4 thirds pi r cubed, which is the um, volume. Is that the volume of a sphere? I'm going to check this out real quick. Volume of a sphere. I'm like 80% sure. 4 thirds pi r cubed. And this is going to be r2 cubed. So we can rewrite Q in terms of rho, and this is specifically electric field 2, so it's going to be K over R2 squared times 4 thirds pi R2 uh, cubed. Yep. Yes, and that looks like quite the mess, and it is, and I forgot rho. Oh, rho. Yes. So I'm going to bring this down just a little bit to move it out of the way. Let's do some canceling. So we got uh, two R2 cubes, two R2 squareds. We got R2 squared on the bottom. That's going to cancel with two, uh, one of the R2 squareds up top, which leaves us just one R, a still R2. Now I'm going to rewrite... Um, So I'm going to take our E1 up here and rearrange it so that we can re uh, solve for rho. I know, it's a little bit messy and I'm sorry. So arrow, uh, good contrast color. This is E1. Rearranging, this equals 2 pi R1 K rho. Rho equals E1 divided by 2 pi R1K. There we go. And we can take that rho, which we know, put it down here. So we have 4 thirds pi times K. 4 thirds pi times K times R2 times rho, which we know is, that's supposed to be an E1 up there, times E1 over 2 pi r1 k. Um, let's see, is anything supposed to be squared? Eh, I don't think so. Hmm. We'll see what happens with this. All right, so now we have, let's see, row. Maybe, we'll see. So now we're just going to do some canceling. So two pi, four pi becomes two. K cancels. And we are left with E2, which is over there, equals two thirds R2 over R1 times E1, which seems counterintuitive, but it might be true. So let's see here. We want to determine electric field E2, E2, in terms of E1 
R1 and R2? Maybe. Quite possible. And one thing to notice here is the units match because R2 and R1 cancel out each other, so it's just a ratio. And then we have electric field equals some sort of electric field, and dimension-wise, that seems plausible. So we're going to take this, and we're going to do the limit as R2 goes to 0 of this. I'm going to get rid of that little E2 there. It's implied. And... As R2 goes to zero, that goes to zero, which would mean that there's, when they, we have an infinitely small radius, zero radius, then we're going to have no charge, therefore we're going to have no electric field, which might be true, might be reasonable. Determine the electric field, the service charge, and investigate. For the limit check, investigate what happens if an E2, if sphere becomes infinitely small, R2 goes to zero. Yep. So this is what I would have for E2, uh, written in terms of R1, R2, and E1, where E1 is the electric field to the cylinder, R1 is the radius to the, of the cylinder, and R2 is the radius of our sphere. So to kind of recap how we approach this, I had no idea what I was doing. So what I did was I drew a picture of what we wanted, and then we wanted the electric field, so I just wrote out electric field. Um, I had linear charge density, but was given uh, a volumetric charge density, rho. So I just looked at what the relationship between uh, linear and volumetric is in this case. In this case, volume is length times area. And I just worked through that, did some algebra. Then I looked at the sphere. We were told that th they had the same volumetric charge density. So I wrote uh, charge in ter terms of our volumetric charge density, plug things in, did some more math, rearranged things, and we got an answer. And it might even be correct. So hope that helped. See you next time.